I use these lips of clay, form them and fashion them. God, if it's not in my manuscript, translate it to my mind and then to my mouth. God, give me rhythm. Do what is necessary through me, God. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to bless somebody online and somebody in this house today. That we will have a better understanding about who we are in you what you're calling us to be. God, we thank you, Lord, for these young people on today. We thank you, Lord, for using them. We thank you, Lord, for healing the leadership she is providing for them. God, we thank you for these parents who are raising their children in the fear and admonition of you. That when they grow old, they will not depart from you. That's what your word says. And so, God, we say, train up a child in the way they should go. And so that's what we shall do. God bless every person under the sound of my voice, whether in this house or online, so that something will be said today will help them be better for you. God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus, the one who can draw people to himself, the one that we glorify, and the one whose kingdom is advancing here on earth. We ask these things in his name and for his sake. Amen. 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 If you would turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, it's so funny that Desiree asked for part three uh, in the comments last week. This sermon... The sermon I started two weeks ago was only supposed to be a sermon. It was not ever supposed to be a part two. And uh, I was already leaning that way, but it's amazing when you yield to God. Because I, I already had something, wanted to walk through some of the Psalms for August. And Lord, the Lord took me in a different direction, obedience. And so Desiree, this is not the third part of 1 Peter chapter 2. But God said to me this week, you got to move from a place of knowing who you are to a place of being and doing who you are. And I'm going to make it clear real quick, but it's a familiar passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter 5 on today, starting at verse 14. Verse 14, Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading from the New International Version of Scripture on today. Very familiar passage of Scripture. I'm going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. Verse 14, reading down to verse 16. This is what the Gospel of Matthew says to us on today. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. It gives light to everyone in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Yes, sir. That they may see your good works, your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. Thus far, the reading of God's word, you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Verse 14 again says, you are the light of the world. Now, I want to preach and teach today as the Holy Spirit shall lead from this subject. You are the light. Type that in. You are the light. And I'm going to make it clear real quick. My brothers and my sisters, for the last couple of weeks, we've looked at this thing called knowing who you are. We looked at the fact, John, that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and God's special possession. And this week, I want to push the envelope a little further and look at it from the perspective of what Jesus says that you are. We must know what God says that you are to know our true identity in Christ. Dr. David Benner identifies, defines identity as the one who we experience ourselves to be. 
The I, each of us, carries within ourselves. Our identity is not defined in terms of, Lady Sonia, who we think we are or what others think we are, but it's based upon how God sees you and me. Let me help somebody early in the sermon today. Stop defining yourself by others and their expectations of you. You see, our identity is defined in terms of what God does to us, the relationship he creates with us, and the destiny he appoints us. Let me say that thing again. God does to us the relationship he creates with us and the destiny he appoints points us. As a Christ follower, you and I have all that we need to identify with who we follow. Yes, we have the abundance of who God has called us to be through the beloved son of his son, Jesus Christ, and we are the beloved children of God. Yes, Stephanie alluded to it. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and when you know that you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ, you know that you walk in the abundance uh, that comes with Jesus Christ. Uh, you and I need to know who we are in Christ uh, so that you and I can live our lives uh, as God intended you and I to live uh, and fulfill the destiny that he has uh, for our lives. The more you and I agree with God uh, about our identities in Christ, uh, the more our behavior will begin uh, to reflect what God says about us. I want to encourage somebody today to learn to see yourself in the manner that God sees you. I got to stop right here and park for just a second. Stop basing yourself on what others say about you because what I've discovered is the only opinion that counts is the opinion of Almighty God. Yes, I need somebody to know that you don't have to allow people to tell you who you are and try to tell you what you should be doing uh, because you are somebody in the eyes of Almighty God uh, and what God says about you uh, should matter. Stop allowing people who ain't even walking in purpose to try to tell you how to walk in purpose. I'm sick and tired uh, of folk taking direction from folk uh, who don't even live for God themselves. You ain't been where I'm going, so how can you tell me about where I'm going? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges I see with people who say they are called and chosen by God is truly to accept what God has said. Uh, but then I'll push the envelope, Steph, that not only do they have a problem accepting what he said, they have a problem agreeing with what he said. Oh, God, let me help somebody. you got to learn to accept what God has said, and you've got to learn to agree with what God says about you, that everything that God says about you is true. You and I got to learn to accept and agree so that we can see. Oh, so we can see ourselves as God sees us. The way you see yourself, the way God sees you, you, uh, is you have to understand uh, what God is saying about you. Uh, I ain't going to let nobody determine my identity uh, because I know who I am in Christ. Uh, I know I can have all that he says I can have. Uh, I can be all that he says I can be. Uh, I know who I am. But there's a whole other thing, G, in knowing who you are. And then operating in who yeah. you know you are. Oh, yeah, we, we can know it, but do you operate in it? That's the question that God raises today. God wants us to know that we know that we know uh, who we are and then live this thing out in the world uh, before us. Uh, that God says uh, when you know it should lead to you living it out. Uh, he says we are called to live on purpose with a purpose. Uh, uh, and we'll see today that Jesus says... Uh, you are the light. Jesus does not mince his words, but he speaks with clarity to his disciples about the purpose that they have to fulfill. That Jesus says, you are 
the light of the world. And the background for our text today is that Jesus is starting his great discourse, which is affectionately known as the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount is a collection of sayings and teachings that Jesus shares with those so we can live out our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Sermon on the Mount goes from Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7 and gives us the central tenets of Christian discipleship. Stay with me now. Jesus gives us eight principles in Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 through 12 on how you and I should live. We call them the Beatitudes, David. They describe the character of the people of the kingdom of God expressed in blessings. Yes, there is reward that is attached to the lives of those who follow Christ and live by the principles. I told you I was coming back to that. You got to learn to live by the principles. And Lamando, I remember when I was coming up in Springfield Baptist Church that in Sunday school, my Sunday school teacher taught me the Beatitudes. She wanted me to know about the blessings of God. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom and in inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst and for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Somebody ought to shout bless. Somebody ought to type in bless. You don't know when to get excited. I said Jesus says you're blessed. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you come. You're blessed when you go. Is there anybody besides me that knows you're blessed? Jesus says you're blessed. Attitudes talks about the blessing that we have. Jesus then takes it a step further. He says, I need you to understand what you possess as a Christ follower. Yes, what I possess as a Christ follower has to be identified by me because I got to live this thing out so I can share it with others. You see, it's so much bigger than you. It's so much bigger than me that he wants you to know who you are so you can share who's done the changing in your life. Got to be seen there. Jesus uses two dynamic, dynamic metaphors to describe his people. And usually when you look at the text, we preach about the whole notion that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But today, as I was dealing with last week of God calling us out of darkness into the marvelous light, God just kept speaking to me, talk about light. Uh, he says, yes, you got to understand that salt season, but light transforms. Oh my God. He, he says, I need you to help the people see uh, that light is about the transformation uh, of people. Uh, and God wants us to walk as a transformed people so that we can help others see who he is. What a privilege, what an honor that we have. What an awesome privilege we have and a responsibility that we have that God has called you and me to influence others for Christ. Oh, God. And I believe the text today will help us to see that God has called you and I light and us to learn to walk in the authority that God has given us. Look at this. The first thing this text teaches us is the power of the light. The text says in the A clause of verse 14, you are the light of the world. Look at this. Jesus doesn't command us to become light, but he makes a statement that you are the light. He makes an announcement that you are the light. He makes a declaration that you are the light. Don't discount the you in the text. Don't you discount the 
there is a definite article and it speaks heavily in the Greek language. It makes you understand that Jesus could have said that you are a light, but he says, no, you are the light. Oh, God, help me in here. All Christ's followers are the light of the world. You are called to be the light of the world. You and I are called to be a person of value, a person of worth, a person of influence, and a person of impact. This metaphor, you are the light of the world, teaches us that God is more concerned about you where you are than what you do and who you are. God says to somebody today that character precedes performance. Oh God, character deals with who we are on the inside. Lady Sonia, Desiree, character determines our actions, our decisions, our motives, and it will determine how we impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. A godly life is a foundation found on good works. Before anyone can be called to action, Jesus defines who we are in him. That Jesus says you need to know your identity before you try to get to work. Jesus gives the Christ follower both a great compliment and a great responsibility when he says you are the light of the world. God is calling us to go public with who we are in Christ. Light is a powerful thing, Deacon Clayton. Light is an amazing thing. While it does not have physical properties, it can have a profound effect on physical objects. Light is something that stimulates sight and makes vision possible. I'll back that thing up and say it again. Light is something that stimulates sight and makes vision possible. It is an ability to alter or affect something. Light is basically a wave of energy that can be seen by the naked eye. Light will conquer darkness. When you're in the dark, you cannot see. Things are not clear when you're in the dark. It's extremely difficult for you to get around in darkness. You and I sometimes stumble when we're in the dark. We trip over things. And every now and again, we will hurt ourselves in the darkness. Ah, It's not easy to find your way in darkness but I stop by to tell somebody when you have just a little bit of light darkness is forced to flee oh my god in the darkest places that you and I can imagine just a little tiny match Lamando when lit has the power to drive all that black and oppress darkness out of our lives light dispels darkness light eliminates darkness the power of the light. You got to realize that you have power because you are connected to the power source. The light covers us. God told me to tell somebody that you got the power. Stop acting like you don't have what you need. You have everything that you need because you are connected to God. Is there anybody besides me that knows you connected to God? the right one baby you ain't connected to somebody that don't have all the power I know somebody knows when you look like you don't have what you need you look like you can't make it another day you tell somebody I know who I get my power from the light the light has power but this is saying bam that helped me Light colors drabness. Yeah. Light colors drabness. Yeah. Did you know that color does not really exist? Oh God, let me help. I'm gonna teach right here. Color is really just a trick of the eye. You see, light is usually perceived as being white, but in actuality, it's made up of energy varying in many wavelengths. These wavelengths comprise all the colors of the spectrum. When light hits an object, that light will either be absorbed or reflected. Some objects scatter light, and while others retract light, but I want to focus on the idea of absorbing and reflecting light. Uh, if an object absorbs all the light that hits it, the object will appear black. If an object reflects all the light that hits it, the object will appear to be white. 
Let me paint the picture a little further on this morning. If an object absorbs every wavelength except blue, that object will appear to be the color blue. Uh, that's how you get blue. Uh, uh, if it absorbs every wavelength except uh, red, it appears to be red, uh, and so on. If it looks that way, if it's green, uh, it's because of the absence uh, of that wavelength. Uh, uh, without light, there would be no color. Uh, and I need to help somebody. Uh, God has called you and me uh, to color this world. Oh, what do you mean, preacher? God has told me to tell somebody. You got to add some color to the world. The world is dark. The world is drab. But you and I, as the light, will be able to color the world. You and I are called to be a ray of hope, a ray of light in a dark world. You are the light of the world. Ah, to be reflective light. Then you and I must learn to absorb Jesus to light. Oh, you missed your chance to shine. If I'm going to reflect the light, then I have to absorb the light. Light does not originate with you and me. Ah, but light comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of the world. We are not the light in and of ourselves, but we are the light because of Jesus. When Jesus came into your life, then you should become the light to a dying in world that you and I must learn to testify and witness about what God has done in our lives. That you and I was hopeless, that you and I was helpless, but the light changed us from a place of deadness and brought us to a place of life. Is there anybody knows that when you put a dying plant out in the sun, sometimes the sun will rejuvenate that plant because it gets the light that it needs. And I'm stopped by to tell somebody today, I ain't talking about the S-U-N, but I'm talking about the S-O-N, who's experienced, experienced me and exposed me to the warmth of his love, the warmth of his grace, the warmth of his mercy. And without him in my life, I don't know where I'd be, but I'm so glad I know him today. Into the marvelous light, and I know that light means something because Jesus says, I'm the light. Yeah. 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 Well, the we have to realize. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, for you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the world. Live as the children of the light. God did not merely change our circumstances, Lady Sonia, but He made a change within us. We were darkness. But now we're in the light. We are in errant light. Let me help somebody real quick. I got to move. The word in errant means existing in someone or something as a permanent or inseparable element, a quality or an attribute. If the light is in you, then the light has to come out of you. Oh God, oh God, let me, let me, let me help somebody. If you are connected to the light, then the light has to come out. Of you. If it's in you, what's in you will come out of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're a cusser, that's why it comes out because it's in you. <laughs> we were, but now we are. Notice the word choice. We were, but now we are. And that's what we ought to get excited about, huh? that the redeemed of the Lord huh? not only must say so, huh? but we got to learn to show so. Huh? We got to learn to let folk know huh? that we are the light of the world. Huh? And we ain't got to conform to the world, huh? but we live in a world huh? that needs the light. Huh? And I need somebody to understand on today huh? that you are a light that must shine brightly. Huh? Because when you expose yourself huh? to the darkness. The darkness has to turn into light. And I need somebody to help. If you don't believe me, this is what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. When 
light touches something, it becomes light. It's lit up and to some degree. The object gives off light itself. And when you've been converted and when you've been changed, you realize that you got God in your life. And when you realize that I can't keep it to myself, when I operate in the light, people own my job. Uh, people in my family, uh, people in my community, uh, people in my social networks uh, will know uh, I ain't just talking about it, uh, but I'm all about it uh, because my actions uh, speak louder than words. Uh, don't tell me about the light, uh, but show me uh, that you are the light. Uh, we have the power uh, because Jesus is operating uh, in us, uh, for us, and through us. Uh, Jesus is the light of the world, and because he is the light, I am the light, because my daddy said I'm the light, because my brother said I'm the light, and what he says about me is all that matters at the end of the day. He says that you are the light. Somebody stand up and say, I am the light. I don't let nobody keep me from what God. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. You are the light. The power of the light. But the second thing this text teaches us is the significance of the light. Look at what Jesus says. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus says in the B clause of verse 14 and verse 15. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp. And put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. Look at what Jesus says. He says, since the light is so precious, uh -huh. since the light is so powerful, since the light is so significant, yes, sir. it cannot be hidden. It's important for you and I to understand the context of the text. Uh -huh. Can I teach right here? Yes, sir. You see, ancient travelers did not have bright lights. They didn't have directional signs. They didn't have paved highways like we do to aid them in their journey. Yes, you know, if you're traveling on 85 down, you thank God that they got signs, mile markers, and they got directional signs telling you the exit. But these travelers didn't have any of that. Most people travel during the day because they knew that darkness was not a good time to travel. Yet sometimes darkness would fall upon the traveler before they reached their destination. The darkness would put them in a dangerous situation, PJ. Thieves and robbers and predators waited to take advantage of the vulnerable sojourner when they would travel to their destination. Ah, but when they saw the lights on the hilltop of a city, it was a bright thing for them. It brought direction, it brought comfort, and it brought safety. Stay with me now. Jesus uses this beautiful metaphor of the city on the hill to describe the Christ follower that the people of God are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Jesus says, if you are a citizen of the kingdom of Almighty God, then we should be able to stand out in the culture. And I got to stop right here for a moment and let somebody know. Uh, stop trying to blend in with the culture. Stop trying to fit in with the culture. Because you and I are called to stand out in the culture. You see, the culture is not my standard. Uh, it's Christ is my standard. Uh, oh, we are to stand out uh, rather than integrate in. Uh, oh, you missed it. Many people are trying to integrate in uh, when God has called you to stand out. You and I got to learn to influence the culture because we cannot be hidden. The light should not be hidden. Jesus says, I'm your city on a hill. It speaks of position in God. Somebody needs to grab that. That when God says you're a city on a hill, it speaks to your position and where God wants you to be. God did not save you and me to hide us. Oh God, God told me to tell some Somebody, uh, that light is at work overtly, uh, not covertly. Uh, oh, you got to see it out in the open. Uh, that God says uh, that we are a city on a hill. Uh, and we are a city to provide uh, direction for folk. Uh, to provide comfort for folk. Uh, and to let folk know uh, that 
Jesus is real. And then we got to realize that we are a city on a hill because the city on the hill has visibility. Don't miss that. Your position of elevation is for your visibility so others can see who you are in Christ Jesus. In fact, many cities were built largely on white limestone and placed on a hilltop to reflect the bright sun rays, allowing visibility from miles away. At night, the white marble mirrored both the moonlight and the burning lamps, acting like a beacon, directing travelers toward the city. Just as these cities made it easier for the traveler to get to the destination, you and I on a city, on a hill, so we can help folk get to Jesus a little more easier. You and I are elevated and easily visible to help direct somebody who's trying to find their way through a barren land. Yes, this land is a wilderness. This land is a barren land. But when I realize that I have a responsibility, that I have a charge to testify about the saving grace and the unsurpassing power that Jesus can keep you in the midst of it all. Is there anybody got a power in your testimony? Because you know, like I know, what the light done for you. Is there anybody in the building besides me that knows where you were but knows where you are now? That God has brought you a mighty Father in heaven. 
New Living Translation says that they'll get these shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Sister Sharon, the English Standard Version says in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. Look at this, Janar. Jesus says we have a duty, a purpose as the light of the world. Jesus actually gives you and I a mandate. Let your light shine before others. This is not a recommendation, Jill, but a divine mandate from Jesus. Verse 16 is in the Greek. It's in the imperative mood. And that means it's a command and not a suggestion. Uh, Jesus says, let your light shine before others. He says it emphatically that you and I, since we are light, why not shine? Uh, to hide the light is contradictory to the purpose of the light. Let your light shine for all to see. Not, not just on Sundays when we come together for corporate worship, but in all times, in every place, no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, it's easy to shine around others uh, when their lights are shining with you. Uh, but can you shine uh, when there ain't nobody? Uh, when there ain't no other Christ followers around you. Uh, will you shine in your staff meeting? Uh, will you shine in your training sessions? Uh, will you shine in the gym? Uh, will you shine at the family reunion? Uh, will you shine when others don't want you to shine? Uh, letting our life shine uh, is an intentional choice uh, that you and I have to make. Uh, the New King James Version says, uh, let your light shine uh, so men can see your good works. Uh, and the light. He says so shine. Ah, I like that word so because so means it puts emphasis on it. It's not just to shine but let it so shine. Ah, you got to realize your light will be seen in one way or another. It will either be seen as a dim light or a bright light and the choice is yours and mine that you and I must realize that when we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lord, uh, that we have to know uh, that people will take notice of our lives. Uh, if we live this thing out, uh, the light will allow people uh, to see your good works. Uh, notice if you will. Uh, Jesus doesn't say uh, they should hear our words, uh, but he says they should see uh, our good works. Uh, they should see the visible uh, manifestation uh, of what God is doing in our lives. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, hearing is essential for salvation. Uh, but what people hear uh, us say uh, uh, can be contradicted uh, by what they see us do. Uh, and that's the problem many times. Uh, we say one thing, uh, but we do something totally different. Uh, and then our neighbors, uh, then our family, uh, then our friends uh, look confused. Uh, we say we love Jesus, uh, but we we love it. Uh, we say uh, that Jesus has done this, uh, but we don't act like he's done it. Uh, is there anybody besides me uh, that knows uh, I'm going to let the world know uh, that my talk uh, matches my walk uh, and my walk uh, is for real, uh, that I am the light uh, and I'm going to shine brightly. Uh, I need somebody to know uh, that he says uh, good works uh, are works that are motivated uh, by the love of God. Uh,
maybe uh, you got to understand uh, there's somebody in the building uh, and somebody online. Uh, you know uh, that you were in broken pieces. Uh, oh, God. Uh, let me help somebody. Uh, is there anybody besides me uh, that was broken? Uh, but Jesus uh, put you back to you. Uh, is there anybody who was broken uh, and others said uh, that you wouldn't go make it? Uh, but the devil is alive uh, because you're here.
somebody online, I dare you to go ahead and start glorifying him. I dare you, Desiree. I dare you, Sister Sharon. I dare you, Sister Janetta.
We got to go. Everybody's standing. Stomach was cutting up this morning, David. Notice the past tense. It was. But, but PJ and my wife and John was praying for me. My wife laid her hands on my stomach. I felt the power of the Holy Ghost moving in my members. So I'm glad that she let her light shine on my life so that I can let my light shine in this preaching moment, God. You are the light. I want us to just realize God has so much for his people to do in this season. We're praying hard, Elder Diane, for things to change within our government, our school systems, our places of employment. But I believe that not only if we pray about it, but if we actually live this thing out. I, I watch people sometimes, Joe, on my day job. They know I ain't playing. I'm in a different season. I don't take no mess. I don't want to hear that. If it ain't for the upbuilding of the kingdom, even on my day job, it's still about the kingdom. It's about the advancement of the kingdom. Sometimes I have to shut out some folk. To block them out. You I said about last week. Sometimes you got to realize some folk. You got to, you got to, you got to do something with them. Give them the hand. But let your light shine, because your light needs to shine brightly. God's tired of the dim lights. He wants a bright light. He wants us to walk in the fullness of what He's calling us to. I'm believing Lamando in these last and evil days. And all I can do is serve God. And try to do his work. And try to live what I preach and teach about. Because every now and then, we're all in the flesh. I told my brother-in-law, somebody almost got me on Friday. I almost was not the light. I, I, something rose up in me, Brother Peek, as he cut me off. I, almost, I was trying to get in the right lane to take 85 north off of 485. He's driving 100 miles an hour. PJ cuts me off. I said, Lord, you, you're putting it to the test. I said, Lord, Lord, he's getting to see something that signs the light. Y'all know, don't, don't act like y'all know. You know, make sure the sun, <laughs> then it's that thing rose up. Lord, Lord, the light of the light. I said, you're giving me a real illustration. <laughs> uh, so rather deep than doing what I normally did, I, I blink my light. <laughs> but God, somebody needs to know him today. I just came by to encourage somebody. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Well, you shall reap a harvest if you faint not. For the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to he or she that endured until the end. And I know there are times that it gets tough for us all, but God told me to encourage somebody today to speak over your life that you are and then to learn to just walk in it and live in it. God is calling us to a place to be not in lack, God is calling us to a place to not be in a place where we can't be healed and delivered and set free. It's time out for the church, just going to church and nothing changing. God is saying that everything that you need, I have, but are you willing to release it to me? Are you willing to surrender to me? Because when you surrender, God will supply. Type that in. When you surrender, God will supply. Surrender. Somebody online, you've been wondering, been asking yourself the question, is this thing about Jesus real? 
I hear people talking about it. But is he real? real. Yeah, he's yeah, real. And I'm going to just say it this way. I know who I was. And I know what I was trying to do. But when I met Jesus, he turned my life around. There's nothing like him. There's nothing like being in relationship with him. So if you don't have a relationship with him, I just want to lead you to him. The word says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That Jesus calls us friend. He says, greater love than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. Then God says, all you got to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. You will be saved. That's you on today and you know that you need the Savior. I just want to lead you to him. I just want to pray a simple prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner and I cannot change that. But I know that there is a Savior called Jesus Christ. Yeah. Died on a cross. On a hill called Calvary for every one of my sins. Not only what I've currently been going through, but he did it once and for all. He paid it all on Calvary's hill. And because he paid it all, I want to find myself in a place today where I want to be in relationship with the one who did give his life for me. It now has been raised from the dead and sitting at the Father's right hand interceding on my behalf I want to be in relationship with him and so I've heard the preaching I've heard the kill children singing on today I've heard the playing I've heard I saw people getting their shout on but I need to get in a place where I have a relationship with you so today I surrender I relinquish I submit myself to you so that I can see that you are the great supplier of all that I need. That you can meet every one of my needs according to your riches in glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. If you prayed the prayer, there's a form that you can fill out. If you're in the house and you don't know him, I don't want to take for granted that everyone is saved. Because church doesn't save you. Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. And so that's who I want you to know. That man named Jesus. If you are saved, but you're in search of a church home. You can be an online member. Stop just being a part of the community, but become a part of the community of faith called the church Amen. through Dorset Chapel. And if you're online or in this house that you need a church home, we need more laborers. We need more people to help shine the light. Who are excited about Jesus Christ. If that's you and you're looking to grow and want to be in a place where you can be connected with other believers. If that's you, you can join by way of Christian experience, by letter from your home church, by watch care. If you've never been a member of a church, you can just come join Ain't nothing we ain't, we ain't, you ain't got to say hocus pocus, do all this other stuff. You accept us, we accept you. <laughs> that's because that's how Jesus rolls. He accepts us. So we accept anyone who wants to come. Anyone. Anyone. Is there one? Get ready to close. I'm going to make y'all laugh real quick. Miss, you can turn that clock off. I don't need to see the negative. I, I beat the 45 minute mark so you can turn that clock off and I say all that uh, because Dick I'm realizing um, the Lord has been working on me I don't know if I'm going to make it every week but the Lord has been impressing upon me it's about longevity son and I got to bring it in just a little bit for longevity. I ain't going to get to 20 minutes, so if y'all looking for that. 
I ain't said that. I promise you that. But I am trying to get on down to about 40, 35. We'll see. But it's not about the time. One of the things that I have realized is if you got something to say, Yeah, sometimes it's hard. And I got something to say. Because every time I get the opportunity to, to declare his name, let's close with this. I want to ask you a couple of questions. I wrote them down, so I didn't want to forget them. And I just want to ask this question. Is anybody going to let your light shine? this week are you going to let your light shine in a manner that some difference going to be made in darkness rather than letting darkness overtake us and overcome us that we're going to shine so that we can change the darkness around us the folk will change it will move on, but the light has to stay bright, bright, and go forth. Bam! Hit that for me one time as we go home. Light is shining in me, shining in me, Jesus. significance of the light and then realize that we have responsibility a duty as the light God I'm believing God that the more we shine the more folk will see that Jesus is the light that shines in me the more we shine the more we walk and talk like you they'll see that it's Jesus who's made the change in me now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let your light shine. Have a great afternoon.